This episode of Best Bets is brought to you by BUSR, the official sports book of Matt O'Leary and why. Head on over to BUSR.com slash Matt and receive a 150% free play bonus up to $2,500. First deposit only. Get in on the action at BUSR. Hello and welcome back to Best Bets. What is going on? I am Matt O'Leary, joined by Newsday's NFL pick columnist, Joe Maniello. Joe, how's it going? Doing good, Matt. How are you? Doing pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, tough week for both of us last week. Uh, both went 2-4, and four, so that brings me to 21-27, and 27, and you're sitting at 26, 21, and 1. So hopefully a uh, good bounce back week is in order here for week 9. Yeah, we'll bounce back this week. Love it. Absolutely. So... Uh, the New York Giants are on a bye, so we are going to do things a little bit different today. We're going to do, uh, we'll pick the Jets, we'll do our game of the week, underdog, best bet. Uh, we'll also do the uh, the bonus pick and a head-to-head later on. But we'll start with the locals, as we usually do. The New York Jets are taking on the Buffalo Bills. They're now uh, 12.5-point underdogs in this game. What's the play here? Yeah, to me, I think the sweat is about three, two or three, maybe even four points too high. I think it's an overreaction from last week. Um, you know, Zach Wilson played probably one of his worst games. Just uh, hard to believe interception. So I get why people are down on the Jets. Uh, there's very, a very slim chance that they could even win this game. You know, they're probably not going to win this game. And, you know, the Bills are not the best team in the football, the second team behind the Eagles. But 12 and a half just seems way too many points. The Jets have a really good defense. And next week is their bye. So I like taking teams going into the bye. Um, last week, six teams going in, four of them won. Um, Giants are one of the ones who lost, but you know everything is, is you know we, team by team basis. But I can see the Jets, um, you know, rallying around that whole. You know, we had an awful game last week, but we got the bye next week. So let's you know let's go in on a high note, even off a loss. To me, like even if they lose this game, you know, twenty four seventeen, twenty four twenty, and play close and have a chance in the fourth quarter, something to build on. But if you get blown out here, you know, thirty one ten, something like that, thirty four. And, you know, I, just, I, I feel like, then, you know, wow, wow, you know, same old Jets, 5-4. and four. Even though they're 5-4, and four, just entered the bye on a sour note after two bad home losses against better teams. So, I think the Jets show up here. To me, the best matchup is, uh, I want to see how Source Gardner goes against Stefan Diggs. Probably his biggest matchup since uh, Jamar Chase early in the season. And I think the Jets will hang around here. I don't think the Bills are going to blow them out. I think the spread is way too high. And uh, I'll probably, probably be wrong, but <laughs> I'll take the Jets plus 12 and a half. Yeah, I'm going to do the same thing and uh, a little nervous with it because Buffalo, their their offense is so you know explosive at times. But I think the Jets defense is good enough to keep this one close. They've been doing a really good job of getting after the quarterback this past week against um, the Patriots. They had six sacks against Mac Jones. Now, granted, Josh Allen moves a lot better than Mac Jones does in the pocket. But still, if you're able to get some pressure to him uh, and with how these corners are playing, uh, and Sauce Gardner and DJ Reed. Yes, obviously Gabe Davis and uh, Stefan Diggs are two really good wide receivers, but I think it's going to be a little bit of a chess match with that offense and defense. Really, the big story to me is if Zach Wilson can bounce back. And it's a very tough Bills defense. Uh, there were a lot of brutal mistakes, but I think if they bring it back to uh, kind of what they were doing the the, the few weeks before with uh, Zach kind of just being a, a game manager and getting back to the run game a little bit, uh, the Packers just ran for over 200 yards against the Buffalo Bills. So I, I don't think the Jets win the game, but I think they do enough to keep it close. Maybe like a seven seven point win for Buffalo, 24-17, uh, 27-20, something like that. Uh, but I, I think the Jets uh, keep it within seven to 10 points. So uh, I'll take the Jets getting the points here. Uh, as for our game of the week, we are taking a look at two kind of underachieving teams in the Rams and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Bucks are favored by three points here. Who do you like? Well, I don't like any of these teams. Uh, <laughs> it's funny, both the last two Super Bowl champions and now three and five against three and four, and probably there's a good chance both of them don't make the playoffs. But um, I'm thinking the Rams. I, I just can't take the Bucks. They haven't covered since week two. I mean, every time you see Tom Brady on red zone or when it's a standalone game, he looks more and more ag- uh, aggravated and irritated, throwing his helmet on the sidelines, is upset with the uh, offensive line. Both teams have really bad 
offensive lines because of injuries and changes. Um, the Rams also have, don't, don't have a running game. Cooper Cup is banged up, but he's going to play. For me, this pick comes down to which who do you trust more? The co- which coach quarterback do you trust more? And I'm going Sean McVay and Matthew Stafford. Uh, Todd Bowles um, doesn't do it for me. And Brady, uh, 45 years old, he looks like he doesn't want to be there. This is the first time in his career he's lost five out of six games. Like I said, they haven't covered since week two. I don't trust them as even as a three point favorite, and they probably should win and cover this game at home. But the Rams, I'm going with McVay, the Stafford, and Cup to make enough plays here. Aaron Donald maybe makes a big play late. I think it's a low scoring game, maybe like a 2017 kind of game. But I think I like the Rams to win outright. I think they're the better team, and the Bucks just have too many uh, make too many mistakes. And uh, it's Brady's body language; he just doesn't want to be there. And I think it's. Th- Another another loss in the season. He should never come back. So I'm going with the I'm going I'm going with the Rams. <laughs> yeah, I I am too. I'm taking the Rams here. And as you kind of said, I don't really love either of these teams. But for me, the biggest thing, and you, you kind of said it here, is the coaching. Sean McVay against Todd Bowles. Uh, shocking. Todd Bowles teams uh, struggling and uh, making some poor clock management decisions down the stretch and undisciplined penalties. It's uh, I I just look at the coaching. Uh, and and see a, a very big favorite for for the Rams there in terms of McVay versus Bulls and uh, neither of these teams look right um, at all. But I just don't for whatever reason I just don't trust Tampa Bay. And even with Stafford kind of being banged up and not looking like himself, and Cooper Cup obviously uh, has been a little bit banged up, especially this past week. But Brady, man, he just, I, I don't think he should have came back. He's obviously dealing with a lot right now in his personal life, and this just looks like a team that could go off the rails here. So I'll take the Rams getting the points, but I don't love this game in particular. How about a best bet? Speaking of game, uh, maybe a game that we uh, we do like. Is there one that jumps out to you on the slate? Yes. Well, we always talk about this. You know, when you look at the spread, when you look at the, the upcoming games, like, you know, the Sunday one weekend, you start looking at the other game. And to me, there was uh, one spread that really jumped out at me. And the second one I like is actually going to be my underdog pick. But for the best bet, when I was looking at the spread, I couldn't believe this team was getting points. And we talk about this all the time when that happens. Usually Vegas knows more than us. But um, the Seattle Seahawks open as a three-and-a-half point favorite, uh, three-and-a-half point underdog at Arizona. I think the line is down to two now. Is that correct? Yeah, Seattle two. plus two. Mm-hmm. I love the Seahawks this week. Um, they played in week six, and they beat the Cardinals 19-9. And that could have been more lopsided. Uh, Seahawks have won three in a row. Cardinals are a mess. They're such a hard team to figure out. And I think there's a, you know, we just, we just talked about the coaching edge with uh, McVay and Bowles. I think there's a huge coaching advantage in this game between Pete Carroll and Cliff Kingsbury. I think uh, Kingsbury is totally overrated. That team makes a ton of mistakes. Uh, they same thing with Bowles, the uh, clock management. And uh, Murray took a sack last week in the final comeback. And a couple weeks before, they had a Take a timeout. There's just so many mistakes. Seattle, let's talk about Seattle. Uh, Geno Smith uh, looks like an MVP candidate. Uh, Kenneth Walker, r- a great rookie out of Michigan State, running the ball. We got great receivers. And the defense, which was uh, maligned early in the year, they won three straight, and they've only allowed 15 points a game. Uh, I think the Seahawks are the better team, much better coach team. And I don't see why they're underdogs in this game. I guess because Arizona's at home, but they've lost uh, eight of the last nine at home, dating back to last season, the one and three this year. They're just a mess. I mean, DeAndre Hopkins does make them a better team, obviously, but right. I think this will be a close game because it's a rivalry game, and Arizona's desperate. I don't think Seattle's going to win by you know two touchdowns, but I think Seattle wins by four to seven points. I think they're the better team, and I have no idea why they're, they're getting points here. They just beat them a couple weeks ago, and Seattle's gotten better since then. So, to me, this is uh, what was similar to that earlier in the year when I had the, the Cowboys as my lock of the year when they beat the Rams. I didn't get that spread either. Yeah. I had a similar feel to this, similar feel to this game. I just love Seattle in this game. I think they're a really good team and defense coming along. And Carol just, uh, I think he's just a super master motivator, Carol. And he's you know, 70 years old and he's got more energy than both of us. So <laughs> half his age and uh, almost half his age. But uh, I, I love Seattle here getting two points. And I think they'll win outright. So uh, whenever a team, better team's getting points, it's an easy pick. So Seattle plus two, uh, best bet. Yeah, I I love that one too this week. I, I don't get that spread at all. And just with how Seattle's playing, I, I don't. If they if they're getting points, you got to take them. I agree with you there. But I'm gonna go with the New England Patriots minus five and a half. They are playing the Indianapolis Colts. And last week the Colts lost a tough one, 17-16 to Washington, and it was Sam Ellinger's uh, first start. And he he looked okay. 
Uh, 73 completion percentage, over 200 yards on just 23 passing attempts. But Bill Belichick owns young quarterbacks, and especially in Foxborough. So asking this kid to go on the road, making his second career start as a six-round draft pick from last year, that is an incredibly tough ask. I think it could be a long, long day for Ellinger. And uh, I, I don't love this Patriots offense. I don't think they looked particularly great this this past week. They were kind of benefited by some great field position uh, after the Zach Wilson turnovers. But I think the defense rolls again and and creates some havoc here for, for a young quarterback making his second start. So this is more of a anti-Ellinger in New England pick than it is thinking the Pats are, you know, six points better than anyone. But I'll take the Patriots minus five and a half here. Yeah, I agree with everything you said. So how about an underdog? You said you liked an underdog this week. Well, so yeah, far, so all another, underdogs. Yeah, another spread that jumped out. Um, the Tennessee Titans are getting 12 and a half at mm-hmm. Kansas City. That spread, spread is ridiculous, in my opinion. I don't care who's playing quarterback for the Titans. Um, they won five in a row. All covers, obviously, not, not no one against, uh, no team that's on the level of Kansas City. But the Titans, um, they, had, they play Kansas City well. Uh, Andy Reid, since he's become coach of the Chiefs um, in 2013, only two and five against the Titans. And everyone, you know, we all talk about Andy Reid off a of bye. He's 20-3 and three off a regular season bye. That's like one of the most known stats for anyone who bets on the NFL. But Mike Vrabel is uh, excellent as an underdog. Um, Action Network had this great stat that you helped, that you found for me. 20-10 um, and 10 against the spread, I believe, or 20-9, and nine, one of those numbers, uh, against the spread in 19-9 and nine straight up or something like that. But 20-10, you know, and 10, I'm pretty sure, against the spread – when the spread is uh, three or more points. So when the Titans are getting three or more points under Mike Rabel, they've covered 20 out of 30 games. So that tells me that I like Rabel. I think he's one of the best coaches in the NFL. And the key for this game is pound Derrick Henry, keep Patrick Mahomes on the sideline. Titans always play them tough. Even if Malik Willis has to play, I think Tannehill is going to play. But I like the Titans to keep this close. I do not think they're going to win the game. Kansas City's off a bye, like I said. But if you look at Kansas City's games, I mean, as explosive as they are, they play a lot of close games at home. They have um, a four-point win, a four-point loss against Buffalo, a one-point win against the Raiders, which they probably should have lost that game Monday night, and a three-point win against the Chargers on Thursday night. So they play close games, and even if the Titans lose by 10, you still win here because you're getting 12 and a half. Titans covered uh, last year in a similar spot against the Rams on a Sunday night. They were like big big dogs, and they get eight and a half. They won outright, so they're a really well-coached team. I think Vrabel can rally them around the whole underdog thing. They won five in a row. And I don't see I don't see this game being a blowout. So twelve and a half feels like another gift to most of Seattle. So Titans plus twelve and a half. Yeah, I agree with you there. The Chiefs just seem to always play tight games, and Vrabel is a very good coach. I think they keep that one tight. The, the, the and, they, direct- and they beat them last week too. I'm sorry, they beat them last year too. Titans won twenty seven three at home against the, the Chiefs. So that's right. They seem to they seem to play them well. So I don't think I don't get the spread at all. Yeah, no, it seems way too high. Uh, the the one that I'm going to go with is uh, a team that I usually don't like to pick, but I think this is the second week in a row that I'm picking them, and that's the yeah, Commanders yeah. <laughs> plus three and a half uh, against the Vikings. I like a couple of things here. One, I think Heineke's like kind of fun. I don't know if he's good or the long term answer there, but he's fun, and this team is uh, playing a little bit better now with him under center and. I love the uh, revenge angle uh, the, the of Washington being able to beat uh, Kirk Cousins, their former quarterback, with uh, with Heineke. Uh, who knows? Maybe it goes the other way. And the Vikings are uh, the, the better team here. But uh, I kind of like the Commanders this week to keep it close. And I think they could win this game outright against uh, Kirk Cousins and that Vikings team. So give me the Commanders plus three and a half. Yeah, I agree. With the pick. I think the Vikings are... I picked them to win the division before the year, but I'm not really that impressed. They play a ton of close games, and it could, it could easily be four and three instead of six and one. So I'm not sold on them. I like that pick too. How about a bonus pick? What's another one that jumps out? I thought I was originally going to go with the Packers minus three and a half at Detroit. I think they're going to cover, but I feel like that Detroit's going to play well in that game. So I think it could be a three point win. So I'm worried about the half. So I switched this morning when I messaged you. Um, I'm going with another underdog here. It's my fifth straight underdog. Um, I'm going with the Carolina Panthers, the team I basically left at a couple weeks ago, but they're getting, I think, eight points. At, uh, seven and a half. Is that right? Seven and a half points. That's way too many points. Um, you know, they, they traded McCaffrey. They fired the coach, uh, traded Robbie Anderson. So it looks like their team has basically t- is tanking, but the players there are not. They're playing tough. They beat Tampa Bay two weeks ago. Last week, they probably should have beaten Atlanta um, on a walk-off late, uh, long touchdown pass, but uh, 
There was a penalty, missed extra point, and then they missed a field goal in overtime. They lost 37-34 at Atlanta. It just shows you that they're not, they haven't quit. And the Bengals, um, better team, should win this game. I think they will win the game, but I don't think they're going to win by more than a touchdown. They just lost last week at Cleveland. They're down their best receiver, down their best cornerback, and they may overlook, you know, they might not think much of the Panthers here, a two-win team. But I think the Panthers are going to bring it. I think it's going to be a close game. Might even be tied in the fourth quarter. I think the, Joe Burrow does enough to, you know, to win 24-20 kind of game, even 24-17. But seven and a half is a huge number, and uh, I like the Panthers to uh, continue to play strong when we thought they were tanking. So I like them a lot. So the spread is just way too high if your team is down the top receiver and top cornerback. So seven and a half Panthers plus seven and a half for the uh, Bonus yeah, I, I like that one too. It just I, I don't know with how since he played last week and with uh you know the tendency to play close games and down the injuries that they are that this spread is so high. Uh for mine, I'm gonna go with a a, a kind of low spread with the Raiders minus one and a half over Jacksonville. The Raiders I are I hate this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh for me, this is this is a kind of just I am I'm fading Jacksonville here. Uh they lost a game that I think we both thought Jacksonville was gonna beat. Denver last week yeah, in, in London in a in a place where they usually play pretty well, but yeah. uh, they they've really struggled recently. Um, the, the Jacksonville Jaguars have uh, they they're a team that doesn't cover very often. Um, not that the Raiders have been been great, but I, I don't know. I just think right now Trevor Lawrence is struggling a little bit. The the these second year quarterbacks have been very up and down right now. Justin Fields probably looks the best uh, out of the bunch, but um, I, this is more of uh, of trusting Vegas, I guess, which could, which is a little bit risky for me, but I just don't like how this Jaguars team is playing. So I'm fading them for a little bit. Yeah. I'm taking away this too, but only because I mean, I hate this game, but um, I like taking teams off a really bad loss of 24, nothing at new Orleans. I feel like the Raiders are the better team and it's only, you know, like it's basically a pick them game. But uh, yeah, I agree. I'm taking the Raiders, but I don't, I don't, I, don't, I, I shouldn't have to pick the game. In the case. <laughs> Love it. So let's close out. We're going to do a head to head. We'll go with the Ravens and the Saints, which is the Monday night game. Who do you like in this one? Yeah, it's Monday night game. Last week, uh, it, it paid off taking the underdog. I like the Browns a lot in that spot. I don't know. Something about I like taking the underdogs in, at home on Monday night. I uh, have to go back and check this week what the, what the, what the numbers are all year, but. Something about that, you know, home team, underdog, playing in front of a great crowd. So the Superdome is one of the hardest places to play. I like the Saints here, actually. I think the Saints are, they're three and five. They've had a ton of injuries. Best players, you know, some of the best players, quarterback receivers out. I think they're going to win this game outright. And I think they're going to win this game and then win the, win the division. Uh, it's, a, it's a really bad division. You know, you know I don't like the Bucks. Uh, Panthers are too far behind, I think. And the Falcons, I don't know if they can keep it up. So I think the Saints will win this game, get to four and five, and keep going here. The Ravens obviously have Lamar Jackson and they have good coach in John Harbaugh and the, one of the greatest kickers of all time, Justin Tucker. They have a ton of injuries too. Um, Mark Andrews is uh, hurting, Gus Edwards and uh, Bateman, the receiver. So a big, a, a big player at each spot in offense. So I think the Saints will, uh, will be a close game. I do not like Andy Dalton in prime time. He's 6 19 for his career. Everyone knows about that. But uh, I'm, I like him here in the, in the underdog spot. They, they beat the Raiders last week, which we just talked about, 24 0. It's kind of win you can build off of, and I think the defense is underrated. And I feel like this is the kind of game where they this is like one of those season defining moments where they win this game four and five right back in it. And the Ravens they, they play last Thursday night, so they have an extra extra rest, almost like a week and a half off. So I think that could also work against them. And I just don't they're not a dominant team. Like if they need uh, Lamar to play lights out for them to for them to win big, I think it's going to be a really close game. So I like to see the home team getting points. I think they're going to win outright. So. Six for six underdogs we need this week. Saints plus two and a half. Uh, head to head to. Wow, I don't think we've seen this six six straight underdogs uh, from you. But I, yeah, we usually take too many favorites. Yeah, <laughs> but I I love it. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Ravens, obviously in the head to head matchup. But a couple things that you mentioned for the reason why I'm going with the Ravens. Number one, Andy Dalton prime time. You said the records uh, six and nineteen. It's that's. That's incredibly rough. And while the Ravens have been struggling, I just I don't really trust this Saints team yet. I think they're they're pretty inconsistent. I know they're coming off a big win, uh, an impressive win over the Raiders, winning twenty four uh, nothing. But it, it seems like they take one step forward and then two steps back. So this is a big test for them. And I kind of like Baltimore getting extra time to to prep for this game. Uh, I think it could play into their favor, kind of seeing what they're what they're trying to do. 
Um, and with uh, with the trade rumors, with uh, Kamara, obviously doesn't end up getting moved. But I, I think this Ravens team, they are starting to hit their stride a little bit. They won two in a row after falling to three and three after the loss to the Giants. Uh, they very much so look like they're in the driver's seat for the AFC North. And I think that motivates them and they continue to roll here uh, and win a relatively close one. But uh, I'll take the Ravens like 27-20, something like that. Okay. All right, so run through these real quick. We are both on the Jets plus 12 and a half against the Buffalo Bills, both on the Rams for the game of the week plus three against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. My best bet is Pats minus five and a half. Joe likes Seattle getting two points. Underdog pick, I'm going with the Commanders plus three and a half, and Joe is going with Tennessee plus 12 and a half. My bonus is Raiders minus one and a half. Joe is going with the Panthers plus seven and a half against the Cincinnati Bengals. And head to head, Ravens and Saints. I'm on the Ravens minus two and a half, and Joe is on the Saints plus two and a half. Joe, another week in the books. Thank you so much for joining me, and good luck this week. All right, Matt. You too. Thank you.